Okay then my friends, so now we've got a user context where we can log in a user, we can register a user, and we're keeping track of that user using this bit of user state. Now what I'd like to do is handle the errors, which right now we're just logging to the console, right? So let me just show you an error. What I'm gonna do is actually refresh this app, right? Just so we don't have an active value for the user here. Then I'm gonna to go to the register page and I'm gonna register for a new account. So let me say right here, for example, peach at ninja.com, right? And then I've spelled that wrong, but it doesn't matter, test. And then what I'm gonna do is try registering. And then if I open up this terminal, we're gonna see right here, it says the password must be between eight and 265 characters long, right? So that is an error that we're currently logging to the console but we don't really wanna just log errors to the console. We'd like to maybe show an error to the user to say, look, the password's not long enough or something. Now in this lesson, we're not gonna go through kind of an extensive um, password or rather error generation system where we generate different errors depending on the responses we get back from AppRite. Instead, what we're gonna do is just display those errors to the user so they can see, but probably I would advise you to create some better error messages based on the response that you get back from AppRite. Anyway, what we're gonna do instead of logging this error message is we're going to throw an error. So we say throw, oops, not in capital T, just normal, throw, an error like so and same for the other one down here we will throw an error right here okay so since we're throwing the errors here when we invoke those functions like over here we're going to catch the error if there is one and then we can do something inside these functions same for the login screen as well so we'll do the login one first of all and what i'm going to do is actually create some more state for the error so we'll say const and then error and set error to update it is equal to use state. And to begin with, the error is just gonna be maybe, I don't know, null. And then down here inside the handle submit function, I'm actually gonna reset the error first of all. So I will say set error, and I'm gonna set it equal to null again. And you might be thinking, well, why? Because it's already null. However, if I try to log in and the password or email is not right, whatever the error is, then eventually we're gonna update that error down here and set it to be a value so we can show it to the user. Now, if they then correct that error and press login again, then to begin with, I wanna reset the error. So while that um, kind of request is going on to AppRite to re-log in with the new credentials, we're not gonna show that error. Now, if we get a new error back after that, then we'll update the error again and show it. But in that time, while we're making the request, we want to reset the error so it's not just hanging here at the bottom. So then, inside this catch block where we catch the error, we're gonna say set error, and we're going to set it to be whatever the error message is. So error.message, right? And then down here, inside the template, we can output this bit of error state. So let's do that. Now, we're gonna output that below the button, I think, down here. So let's do a spacer first to give this some room. And then I'm also gonna paste in this, oops, I've not got it. So let me just grab it from my course files to save me typing this out from scratch. It's only one single line. And here it is. So we're checking, do we have an error? If we do, if it's not null, then because of this, we're gonna output this bit of content, right? If this is null, then we never reach the right-hand side of this evaluation and it's not gonna output this. It's only if this has a value that we show the error then. So we see text with a style prop and we reference styles.error, which we need to make in a moment. And then we output the error itself, okay? So now let's go and output this class down here. I'm gonna paste it in. So we have an error class with a color of colors.warning. I think we might need to import the colors constant as well. No, we already have it, good, okay. In fact, let me copy that because we might need it inside the register screen in a moment. But anyway, down here, we give it the warning color, which is from the colors palette, some padding, a background color, um, a border color, and then border width, border radius, and some margin in the left and right direction. So let me save that. And let me now try this out. I'm gonna to go to the login screen and just try and log in with whatever 
credentials. So I'm going to log in, and there we go. Can we see it? Let's have a look. Yep. So it says creation of a session is prohibited when a session is active. Now, like I said before, <laughs> that's not really an error you're going to show to your users. So you can check those errors when they come back and you can output an appropriate error instead of this line right here. That's there to tell you, I suppose, as a developer. But either way, we know there's an error now and we're showing that to the user. So let's do something very similar for the register page. I'm going to come over here. And we already have that import, good. Now, I'm going to copy a couple of things because they're going to be the same. So the error class, which I will add down here. And then also the error message where we output it. So this thing right here and the spacer. And we'll output that in this template below the button. And then finally, we need the same kind of state. So let's grab the error state up here and paste it and then to be honest I'm just going to manually do the rest right here we're going to update it to reset it so set error and that's going to be null and then down here we're going to set the error to be whatever the error message is like so okay so now and by the way if I come over here and try to log it in it might flash off the screen this error because remember we reset it we set it to be null right when we make a new request so let's try that yeah, it goes, but then it comes back again almost immediately. All right, so let's now try the register screen. I'm going to enter in any old rubbish, and then I'll say test. I'm going to register, and it says invalid email program. Valid uh, value must be a valid email address. Again, not a nice message to show a user, but you could create your own message based on this response, uh, response, which is much easier to read, like that's an invalid email address, okay? Anyway, now we're grabbing those errors that come back from AppRight, and at least we're outputting something to the screens.